Well, hello there, friends. How are you? I hope you all had a lovely and peaceful weekend. I sure did. Um, I have an idea for today. It's Feral Monday. Okay. There will be an eye slash face gloss, but at the end. So I have this idea of a very, very matte look, matte eye, matte blush, matte lip and then adding gloss to certain areas. I thought that would be fun. So I wanna use this palette. So I I know this is extremely spicy price, yes. Um, and you're mostly paying for the packaging. I will say the formula is outstanding and I love that there's a red in here. And also a lot of times reds are not eye safe. We can do what we want. I'm never here to tell you not to do it. I'm just here to tell you about it. Do I do I use not eye safe red stuff all the time? But I want to I want to just put it out there. I feel a lot of times um, there'll be really fun videos, and then they'll be using something that's not eye safe. And yeah, the video is very fun. It's going to get a lot of views, but it could also hurt people. So I'm always mindful of that. All of that to say, I bought this palette in the Sephora cell. I have the other one, and I want to use it. And I love the idea of the red. Maybe some draping later with the gloss. Let's have some fun. This is beautiful. So let's start with some eyeshadow base, which I've already lost. I found it. Why is this the, I can adjust it. There we go, now we're adjusted. I was trying to take a picture before and then after thing. I don't know what I'm doing. Just doing makeup. So let's go ahead and throw on this base. We're just gonna use a clear base. I, I kinda wanna see how that works out. Let's grab, ooh, I almost showed you a brush. Let's grab a C31. We're just gonna even this out. Notice that I started at my lash line. That way we know that we're not missing any spots because these kind of clear bases, they can be actually be a little tricky because if they're not evened out the same way we would even out a base that we can see, they're going to not wear nicely. They're even gonna make eyeshadow patchy. So it's so important that they're nice and perfectly even across the lid. I'm really excited for my look, so I forgot to tag this. This is just the Sephora collection eyeshadow base. I bought it during the Sephora sale, which is now over. Boo hoo! But I, um, I actually got mostly makeup this time. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> so I'm gonna start with this shade. This shade actually kind of spoke to me. This is my first day doing a tutorial. So we're gonna grab that on an E28. And the reason I'm gonna use this is it's very close to my skin tone. You see that? And whenever you can, whenever you can find an eyeshadow that's close to your skin tone, that eyeshadow then becomes your best friend. So what happens is we're able to use that as a blur shade and kind of as an eyeshadow concealer. So I'm gonna pack this on my brow bone. Look at, and I'm getting coverage from it too. Isn't that fun? Ugh, makeup is so much fun. Just look at what that difference made. It's it's very subtle, but there's just such a blur and, and kind of just to conceal around here and conceal with an eyeshadow because then it's actually a lot easier sometimes to use a powder. And um, again, it's just to find an eyeshadow that's close to your skin tone, it's the same idea. We would just swatch it here and kind of see if it disappears, if it melts in, if it corrected that kind of redness there, and it did. So it's really easy, relatively easy, to find your perfect eyeshadow shade to match your skin tone. I'm just gonna keep packing this on and really kind of conceal with that eyeshadow base that's really kind of enhancing this and use that eyeshadow as my concealer up here. Just keep packing it on. And then if you're thinking, well, why aren't we just using our powder foundation? We can, we absolutely can, but generally eyeshadow is just a very satiny finish, usually. And also, it's usually more pigmented. It's even more pigmented than powder foundation. So I'm gonna grab this shade next. That one has more pink in it. It's also gonna be just a little bit darker. Oh, it's so pretty, yep. That's exactly what I envisioned. Oh, not the tap dance. He heard his grandma. His grandma's going downstairs to feed him, Douglas and Jean. Okay, we're just using the side of the brush. And this is a really important technique. I know that we talk about it too much and you're bored with it. 
but with any kind of eyeshadow base that pressing motion is just it's ideal because bases tend to want to move until think of it like baking okay this is good okay let me let me stop this so when we bake uh, and I'll I'll show it if I forget it I'm sorry I, I've, I've got a lot of want to do today get out of my little artist brain but when we bake we don't automatically just take that ton of powder and then just go right in on the wet concealer same thing with the wet eyeshadow base so we kind of lay down that first smooth application of powder right we do a very light amount it's evened out okay it's evened out on the puff think about it underneath here very even and then if we want to shape or enhance the longevity of the makeup then we go back in and we bake so kind of setting even your eyeshadow first like what i do when i'm using small amounts and i'm pressing it into that base that's going to make such a difference on how eyeshadow wears and even how it shows up and I just had someone ask about this eyeshadow base for oily lids. I think it's going to be perfect. It's actually less um, grippy. I don't want to say sticky because that sounds bad because I, I like this, this one. But this one's a little bit more wet. And then if you have oily lids, I think you would really like the Sephora one. Now we need a smaller brush. I've taught y'all for years. <laughs> smaller brush means smaller mistakes. I want to start to get us a nice shadow wing shape i want the shadow wing to be very blurred but i still want there to be some definition so if you kind of look down do you see this natural shadow i'm going to start to shape right under that so that's that's just my natural eye shape you're seeing there and i'm able to see it see over here and then you don't see it but there it is so that's my bone structure there it is and then I'm just gonna place, but we're gonna blend this out with the red. And then I might actually grab an eye to cheek, which is also one of my favorite Valentino products. Again, because it's an eye, ooh, that's good. Because it's an eye to cheek. So it's a, it's a blush that you can put on your eye. And obviously, so I'm gonna keep shading at this angle. And again, remember, I didn't take it all the way to that full shadow because I want it to be diffused once it, once it reaches any higher. Isn't that fun? Oh, I just love makeup. I love, I also love small brushes. I just think it's so fun what you can do. So I'm just going to kind of, it's okay if it gets on your lid. We can clean that up later. I feel that a lot of times we would already feel kind of discouraged because it's gotten on our lid, but that's what my cellar water's for. So just take your time. It's okay. If I want to clean it up, I might just want to put a shade on top of that brown and just have the lid be a little bit lighter, but still in that brown vein. So now I'm just going to keep shading. I have a little bit more and I, I just pick up very small amounts. So whenever I'm picking it up, and this goes for, I don't care if you don't want to do a wild look, but anytime you're even doing your everyday look, only pick up about that much. And you kind of learn formulas better when you do that because you'll understand, oh, this was enough, I didn't overdo it, or okay, so now I understand with this formula, I can do three taps to get what I want. Now we're all gonna get barked at. I don't even know what he's doing. There's no one here. Oh, he's just upset. But it is important. It's it's really important to just kind of start with one tap and then kind of learn your eyeshadow. By the way, we're not here yet, but this is one of my favorite blushes ever. Um, you can see. But let me tell you, you cannot put a dent in these blushes. <laughs> this is shade five, by the way. I'm going to close the gap a little bit more. You're about to see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to really add that same brown shade here. Just keep packing it. I'm picking it up on the side of the brush now so I can really pack it in here. Nice. We're about to start the transition. It's the fun part. And then I'm also going to do the same thing here towards the front on both sides. Honestly, this is coming together better than I pictured in my head. But first of all, let's swatch this shade on my cheek. 
That is just so pretty to me. And that's another reason I wanted to get this palette. So I'm gonna do three taps of that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to transition our brown shade. And there's already quite a bit of red in the brown. So that I picked up one more tap. This is already gonna, all this is gonna do is just really kind of enhance it. And this is also gonna make my brown eyes really, really pop. So I'm just tapping to transition it. And then I'm even going to press, the reason I showed the blush is because in a second, I'll stamp it across all of it and it'll give a really cool effect. But we're not there yet, I just get excited. And I'm using the side of my brush to just to tap to transition this. Now we're gonna grab our E29, our big in a rush brush, and we're gonna do all of our fluffing and our buffing. Pick up a very small amount on the very front of the brush, okay? And by now, I know where my eyeshadows are in, in terms of the base being completely set, but what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna hold the brush too far up. That's gonna be too much pressure. We wanna hold that brush further back, okay? See how far back I hold it? And then we're just gonna do some buffing just to kind of soften edges. And then as I'm buffing, I'm not going out this way. I'm going up once I hit the tail of the brow. Fun. Okay, so that's all the blending I can do for right now till we get the rest of our base on. But I am going to take this shade again on the E28 because it's more flat. That way I can pack. And I'm just gonna pack it in here, right in the center. And I'm just going to do this a couple times. Now I'm going to do my top and my bottom waterline with this brown waterline pencil from Melt. These are incredible. I'm also going to, don't do that, but also do it into a mirror, not your phone. But I'm also going to take this and I'm going to push this into my lash line. Then I'm taking an E26 and that dark brown shadow that we've been using and I'm just going to ever so lightly smudge the lash line. Nice. Hang on, I don't even think I'm gonna do falsies because I love the way my lashes look. I tried a different mascara. Woo! And that's without a lash comb. I'm still gonna use a lash comb I do every single day, but that that's still one coat I have not dipped back in. Who done did this? Golden Dream Beauty Dream On Mascara. That, that has left me speechless. And please never feel the need to buy Enda Hype. If you have a mascara that's working and it, you just bought it, you don't need this one. It's rough out here sometimes. I don't want y'all to ever feel that, but I do enjoy finding products. So let's let's put this on this eye. And by the way, I'm not, I didn't even curl my lashes, but just don't ever feel any pressure. Don't come here to feel pressure. Come here to kind of enjoy what you already have. Or if, if you're almost out of what you have, then we're like, oh, well, I'll pick up that mascara. My other one's crusty. Okay, now let's put on this mascara. We dip back in. By the way, that's what the wand looks like. I love wands that are larger to smaller. You're really able to get in here. And also the smaller one, as you put it on, it kind of adds curl. Or if you were to curl your lashes before, it would keep curl. But I didn't even curl today. It just kept lifting up my lashes. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm not even gonna dip back in. Now I'm going to start to work on the tips of the lashes, and this is what I do. But I have to look into a mirror. Keep lifting. Look at them! And I have on dark eyeshadow too! <laughs> and what I mean by that is dark eyeshadow doesn't usually give the same impact. If I was to just put this on my bare lashes, look at that! and I don't care what mascara I'm using, I will always use a lash comb. It just, it makes things fluffier no matter what. But this is pretty amazing. That's, that's good. I'm gonna do one more coat over here. 
Um, I already did a second coat there, but I'm gonna do one more coat here before it dries. Also, that's important. If we're ever gonna do coats of mascara, it cannot completely dry or you'd have to reactivate with a dry shampoo. Lash dry shampoo. Don't be putting dry shampoo on your eyeballs. This, this is what I'm talking about. I love this stuff. Love it. All right, let's keep it trucking here. Actually, you know what? It might be, it might be time for cereal. I'm at a good, I'm at a good pausing place. Let me go get my little cereal. I'll be right back. I'm back. Listen, the multi-grain Cheerios, they hit the spot. Unfortunately, there was just a few left. And y'all know what happens when you get to the bottom of any kind of cereal. The powder. So I, I took a little extra time and I had to pick them out because I'm not putting that powder in my milk and making some sort of cereal gruel. Love this one. I'm back in M3 now. Ooh, no, <laughs> no, shade match. So I had it on my jawline. So I focused most of the product there and then I like to build upwards. And then I have it here on the back of my hand. And then we're just going to kind of build it up a little bit more. Whoop, here comes Doug Astaire again, my little tap dancer opening up my door okay let's melt that in and then we're just going to it's satisfying to watch and then of course c42 c42 one and i'm going to focus a little extra here just a smidge I mean, honestly, when I was thinking of, you know, who would I want Rosenden Beauty to partner with? And I just feel it would be Cover FX. It's just a, it's a given. It's something that we've been using here for so long. Well, let's be honest. We thought they were, well, they were saying a farewell there for a second and that was wild, but they're not. <laughs> now I get to partner with them. I as in Rosenden Beauty, but it's just, which is me. It is me. I am she. It is we. <laughs> now let's just watch this side blend. Dad, let's get back up here. He can't be stopped. Look how pretty that is. <gasps> and then I have it on the back of my hand. And it's nice and flat on my hand right now. So that's why I was able to do that. Oh, here he comes back. Same thing here. Acting like he did something. He didn't do anything but say hello to my mom's friend that stopped by. And then they went to go, I don't know where they went. Probably to get yarn. Now we take it on a fluffy brush and just ever so lightly melt this towards the front. I used to wonder why I couldn't get my makeup to look melted. And this is why. Now we're still gonna add blush in a little while, but I thought I'd do a nice little pre-melt. So now I'm gonna take this Kiko bronzer. This one is baked and it's gonna be more intense because I'm applying it on a wet base kind of the same idea as shadow, applying it on a tacky base. But I'm also picking up small amounts of it because I don't want this look to kind of lean too heavy into the bronzer. I want it to be more about the blush in just a second. But I do want a little bit of defini definition on the perimeter. Now I'm gonna use a concealer closer to my skin tone. This one matches me again. So happy I missed it. Shade five. And then I don't think I wanna put concealer anywhere else. I feel like I have enough coverage. I don't need it. Now we're gonna take this brush and you may or may not, hey, I'm trying to film. The audacity of this household sometimes. Anyways, 
we're gonna go do a test shoot with this particular brush once I get done here. I'm actually gonna do it before I add the gloss. So yeah. Okay, so now we're taking that very dark shade. Remember that one? Ah, things are moving around. We're taking that one and I have it on the side of my brush and I'm just kind of pushing it into my lash line. E26 is so perfect for this. And then I'm gonna grab my pencil again. No, I'm not, because it's my way. It's me, I'm the reason we can't have nice things. Did I put it away? I'm trying to keep my vanity tidy and oh, that's not working. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. And then I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna tap it into my lash line. So when I'm saying tapping it on my lash line, I'm not going back on the water line, that's fine, but I wanted to darken this up a little bit more. So I'm just doing some nice little tippity taps and then back with my E26 and we're certainly not gonna have fallout because it's a gel. There, that's the level of intensity I was after. So we have our smoke, and then if we go back in and add more intensity, you can see you just get so much more depth. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and set, and we're setting that eye pencil, setting all that. I'm still going to transition a little bit more, but we're not there yet. But we're using our Nakia Joy Brightening Powder. I'll get y'all the link. At this point, I just leave it open on my desk. I should shut it, but I, f I film so daggum much. I just leave it open, I'm ready to powder. Isn't that nice? And we're almost to our blushy part. So I'm just gonna bake right here just to brighten a little bit, but notice that we set first. That's what I was talking about earlier. So we're gonna take a little bit of the red shade. Remember how pretty this one is? Take it on the tip of the brush. And then I'm just gonna tap around here. Now we're gonna take a C41, minus the powder on it. What have I been doing? There we go. And we're gonna grab our blush that I showed you earlier, the eye to cheek that I've used for many moons now. And I'm just going to lightly stamp it out this way. And the way that it's just so even and all at once, it's just, it's magical. And it takes a larger brush to get this effect. Um, now if you're like, mm, I don't want that much draping. Just take your foundation brush, tap back around these edges. I actually don't want to get too wild just yet because I'm about to take pictures. So that just looks perfect. Look at that flow. And I'm telling you, using a larger brush is the key. Just some really light taps. So pretty. Now I think, I'm trying to decide if I want to mix the blush colors. No, I think I'm just going to use this one. And I'm just gonna use it more on the side of my face. I was saying I was just gonna use it on the side of my face instead of the front or the apple. I'm just gonna apply it here. And whenever I'm picking up product on the C41, I'm mainly picking it up on the front, right? Okay, so we place with the front. That's how we get our precision, but then we transition with the rest of it. So if you've ever wondered, why did you make your blush brush so big, Rose? It's cause we're multitasking with one brush. Too small and I'm only gonna get one effect, but since it's sloped, I'm able to place and then transition. But now there's not anything on the front because it just, it lays down the product, so we're good. And then you just get seamless blend. My eyes look almost a completely different color. So fun. I love it. So let's press in our bake. We like to press it in. It's going to make sure that we don't have flashback. And it just kind of keeps it really bright where we wanted it bright. That's what I was doing. I was extra brightening up this. It's going to look nice in photos. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tap any edges. Tap over the blush. So I'm gonna do a lip stain first. This is going to obviously change the color of whatever lipstick I put on. It kind of brightens it up a little bit. 
I like this particular shade because it's not as neon as some lip stains. And I'm trying to be very light handed because it can get pretty dark. And then I'll just kind of line my lips. It's so easy since it's a marker. Still gonna put stuff on top of this, but this has been one of my favorite things to do recently. Then I'm gonna do my favorite lip liner at the moment. This one's the Kiko Milano in Rosy Brown. That's Douglas Snoring. And I'm still gonna add gloss, but let me go get the pictures that we need to get. And then I'm gonna top it with this Give Beauty Gloss. I wore this all weekend. I've used it before, but this shade right now with this type of lip it's just everything that i need i don't want to put too much on because it's really pigmented but i do like where it takes the lip and it has beautiful shine and it's super com comfortable and it smells like cake okay i'll be right back and then we'll add the eye gloss and then i was going to have the gloss come around here kind of like a c shape but I'll be back. So I already did the other eye I filmed a video, but I thought it would be fun. Let me get this to focus. I thought it'd be fun. Apparently when you hiss, there you go, to do it with back camera. So this is from ABH and I just wiped off a little bit of it. And then we're gonna start on our lid. Anyways, I'm shooting it with back camera so you can really see it. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And then I went ahead and I just took it here. But it does thin out, as you can see over here. That way you're able to kind of still see everything peeking through in just a second. So editorial, so much fun. Now I've actually had this side done for at least 15 minutes. And you know what? It's really not moving around wildly. I'm not trying to tell y'all this is a long wear product, but usually by now, there would be some type of disintegration with the eyeshadow. Um, and there's very minimal, very minimal. So is an eye gloss gonna move? Yes, yes, it's a, it's a traveling situation, but I can't feel this on my lids and it's not just breaking down the eyeshadow instantly like some other eye glosses. So don't buy this thinking that it's not gonna move, but if you wanna have fun with your makeup, take some pictures, this isn't going to be as messy and as meh as some. All right, my friends, that's gonna be it for today. Me and my slimy amphibian self. You know, I've got a lot to edit. Usually I'll film more, but I have so much that I need to edit. Fun stuff that I'm just going to go edit. I'm going to go make myself a cup of coffee downstairs. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go edit. I'm done for the day. Well, I'm not done, but I'm done filming. I, you know, sometimes you get so many ideas and you want to get them all out. But then if you do too many, you kind of lose you lose your fire and then you lose your train of thought and then you're just like blush be pretty put blush here and then you're like that was a waste of energy <laughs> i love you so much in case nobody's told you today i'm not sure i'm gonna post tonight um so I'm, i might not but i um don't don't forget to enter the giveaway and i'm so excited and it's gonna be a really fun week it's basically cover fx rose and ben beauty partner week it's very exciting this is a very big accomplishment for me um, it's a it's it's a big it's a big one and it means a lot to me so thank you for participating and supporting and just looking at it at all thank you i love you so much and i'll definitely see you in my dms